A lot of people don't like how verbose Redux is. This is why in this video you will learn a basics of the alternative which is called Mobix. And we will build here a small project with Mobix and also compare it with Redux. So here I already prepared for us a small React application. As you can see here we have an input where we can type something and we can hit add user. After I clicked here we have a new user here in our list of users and our total is being increased to 4. And here is the code. Inside app we have just a single component users. And all magic is happening there. As you can see here we have two states. First of all the array of users and secondly the state for our input value. And now here inside we first of all have an input with our input value and when we are changing it we are setting this input. And here we have a user button which adds a user to the array. And here on the bottom we are mapping through our users and rendering them. And now as you can see here we have a function add user where inside we are generating our new user with random ID and our input name and we are setting it inside an array. And after this we are resetting our input. So this is a plain implementation of a small feature without usage of Redux or Mobix for example. And the goal of this video is to show you how we can move the whole logic from this component inside Mobix and to compare it with Redux at the end. This is why first of all let's install Mobix and Mobix React. This is why I want to jump inside console and write here yarn add Mobix and also Mobix React. And it is working essentially like Redux. Mobix is just a library like Redux, it doesn't have anything to do with React. And also we have binding between Mobix and Redux, this is this library Mobix React, exactly like we have a library Redux React. Our next step is to plan what we want to move inside Mobix state. And actually here we have our use state for our string. It doesn't make a lot of sense to move it in the Mobix because it doesn't have any logic and it doesn't have any data. And actually what we want to move inside is this users array and that users functionality. Which actually means we can move our users inside external state, in our case Mobix, and then every single component can use these users inside Mobix and also it can tell Mobix to update a list of users with a new user. And in order to do that we want to create a store. And just to remind you, inside Redux we have just a single global store that we update every single time. It is not like this inside Mobix, we can create lots of stores. And this is a huge difference between Redux and Mobix. And actually here I want to create a new file which will be a store for our users. This is why userstore.js. Now inside I want to create a class and this is a class users store. And inside our class we want to store some data. In our case it is at least array of users. And after this what we want to do, we want to export on outside the instance of this user store. This is why here export const we have our user store and we are calling here new to create an instance of our class user store. And actually as you can see here we have zero code regarding Mobix for now. What we need to do now, we can jump back inside our app and we can provide a store for our users. This is why here on the top we can import our user store from user store. And we can pass here as a prop store and this is just user store. And this is typical approach, we have just a component where inside we are providing different stores and this component doesn't know what store it uses at all. Because here we have just a word store which is kind of store for this specific component. It doesn't really mean that we are using user store just for this component, we can also import it in any other component. Because this is the same instance. Now let's jump back to our component users. And actually here we won't have our users array, so I will remove it completely. And we want to copy this whole function at user because we need to move it to our user store. And actually here inside we will have just a method add user. And it won't do everything like here because it doesn't have anything with for example cleaning of our input. But here we will get just a name of the user that we want to create and here we need to pass this name inside new user. And after this we can simply push this new element inside our users array. 
This is why here will be this dot users, and here inside we are pushing our new new user element. And as you can see, in comparison to Redux, we are not talking here about pure functions or pure reducers that we can't mutate. Here we can simply write basic JavaScript code, which is completely mutable, and this is totally fine. This is why here we are just using push and not spreading and creating new array like we would do inside Redux. Now we can change our component, and actually here inside our users we know that we are getting store. And now here, as you can see on the bottom, we are reading this users from store.users. Why is that? Because store is just an instance of our class, and we have access to this array of users. And here we simply mapping through these users. Now here on the top we also can use store.users.length, and we also must update this add user. Instead of set user, we need to call here our add user. So here will be store.addUser function, and we are providing input value inside, which actually means we can completely remove this generation of new user, because here we are calling our store. Let's check if it's working. As you can see, now we can write something here, click at user, and it is completely working. But actually, it doesn't have anything at all together with Mobix. Because what we did here, we simply provided inside store, this is just an instance of the class, this is kind of an object. And what we are doing here, we are calling store add user, and we are not doing anything, this is just a function which updates our users by reference. And here we are just rendering this users array by reference. This is why it is working. But now what will happen if we will jump inside our app.js and write here set interval, for example. And inside our set to interval, what I want to do, I want to create a new user. This is why here we can write user store dot add user, for example, foo. And actually what it does, it externally changes our store. This is exactly what will happen a lot inside our application. We are not just using store for one component, we can update our store from different places and our component must be re-rendered. As you can see here, I'm reloading the page and we're not seeing anything. Actually, this code is happening, but our user won't be rendered here. The main point is that we must do two things. First of all, we must say inside our store that we must look for our property users and our method add user. And secondly, for our component, we must say to Mobix that it must observe our component and re render it. So let's do this now. What we must write here is a constructor, and inside this constructor we want to use a function which is called make observable. And as you can see, it is auto import from Mobix, and we are passing inside this. And as a second argument, we are passing here an object with fields that we want to observe. And in our case here, we are saying that for this store, we want to observe our array of users. And actually here, we must say what is this, and this is actually an observable. So this is just a value. And second thing that we want to define here is an action. And actually, exactly like inside Redux, we have here actions. And our method addUser is actually an action. This is why here we must say that our addUser method is an action. And we're importing this action also from Mobix. And with this, actually Mobix will observe our users array and our add user function, and it will render all our components when these two things are happening. So this is everything that we must do from the store side. But now we must jump inside our users component, and here we want to wrap the whole component in observer. And as you can see, observer is a special function, this is actually a high order component of Mobex React. And what we must do, we must pass the whole component inside this observer, which actually means we are opening here observer, this is our component, and here on the bottom we are closing it. And with this we are saying for Mobix, okay, please observe this component for changes and re-render this component when needed. Now let's check if it's working. I will reload the page, and as you can see now, every single second we are getting new item foo, because here inside our app.js we have a set interval with one second, and our component is being re rendered directly after our store was changed, but it won't work without setting inside our users this observer 
and without our user store and this make observable because actually here we're defining our add user function and this user array. If we will remove add user function from here and reload the page, as you can see it is working but we're getting a warning. And here we have strict mode enabled and here changing observed observable value without using an action is not allowed. This is why here we must provide a user and we must say that this is an action. So how you are working with Mobix? You simply create first of all the store, then you provide the store inside component, then you are making some properties of the store observable and also you create some actions. And the last thing that I want to show you here is computed. We can define some computed properties inside our store. For example, in our case here we have a property total and we can define it here as a function. And as you can see, I'm defining it inside the class with get keyword. This is why here inside we can simply use it like instance.total without round brackets. And what I want to do here, I want to return this.users.length. And this is not all, we also must inside our make observable provide this total and we must say that this is computed and we are auto importing it from Mobex. And now we can jump back inside our users component and here we should not use store users length, we can directly use just store.total. This is completely fine because we have a computed property which is based on our array. Let's reload the page, as you can see it is working just fine and here we see updated our total. Now let's remove our set interval, we don't need it anymore, because we tested that we can update our component from outside. And now I want to sum up the differences between Mobix and Redux. First of all inside Redux we have just a single state, and this state is completely pure, we never mutate this state. And this is extremely important because it simplifies debugging, you can really roll back your state to any old change, and this is much more scalable. This is one of the points why Redux is scalable better and why it is more popular. One more important point is learning curve and actually it is much more difficult to master Redux because you have lots of concepts there. You have actions, then asynchronous actions, reducers, selectors and much much more. It is a lot of stuff to master and in comparison in Mobix it is really simple and easy. And also the thing that people don't like about Redux the most is the boilerplate, because we are writing lots of code inside Redux and yes it is fully configurable, scalable and we can do there whatever we want. We don't have anything there which is happening under the hood, like for example inside Mobix. This is exactly why the Mobix is much easier to start with, but is much harder to tune when you need to implement some difficult changes. Which actually brings me to the last point about the synchronous actions inside Mobix. You don't even need to learn anything regarding them, because we can just jump inside our user store and here we have our add user function. And this function can simply be an asynchronous function. For example, here I can just write set timeout and here we have two seconds delay, just like an asynchronous call and I must put everything inside. After this we will reload the page, add a user and in two seconds we will get our data. But we are getting here an error that observable values without using an action is not allowed. And what we must do here, we must for this anonymous function say that this is an action. This is why here we must write an action word and close round bracket afterwards. And this is exactly the only thing that we need to implement to bring asynchronous actions inside Mobix. This is that simple. As you can see now it is working just fine. For me personally, I prefer to use Redux for my own projects and not Mobix, because it is more popular, I can configure it really deeply and I don't need additional magic. But if you want to learn something easier or you simply need a fast start, then Mobix is really a nice alternative. And actually if you are interested to learn how to implement graphs inside React, make sure to check this video also.